if the Porsche 911 had a theme song, it would be Frank Sinatra singing, I did it my way. Sports car enthusiasts seem to have a binary love or hate opinion of that air-cooled single overhead cam flat six cylinder engine hanging over the rear axle. Written off more than Robert Downey Jr., within years of its availability in 1965, 911s were criticized by insurance companies for the tendency to be wrecked spinning off public roads. The automotive press was convinced the model's days were numbered. Instead, Porsche engineers dug in their heels, first lengthening the wheelbase in the late 60s, and in the 1970s adding inch wider wheels and tires. By the time our feature, Carrera Targa, appeared in 1987, a quarter of a million 911s had already rolled off the production line. It wasn't even until 1997 that water cooling finally replaced air. Call it dedication, call it stubborn, call it the rear engine 911. Still going strong is one of the most successful sports cars of all time. wielding dentist with a cocaine problem but with the guards red paint the black target top the black Fuchs wheels it just looks perfectly 80s now let's talk a little bit about what it's like to drive so the first thing you need to know is that if you're more in line with driving uh, a Miata or a Corvette or a Camaro, the Porsche is going to feel a little weird to you. The people it won't feel weird to are those people who, and I hate to say it Porsche, but who have a lot of miles and beetles. You sit down, you've got this very flat dash, upright windshield, sizable steering wheel, and the pedals are hinged at the floor. There's a long clutch pedal travel. So if you have the experience of driving the car on which all air-cooled Porsches were based on, the VW Beetle, this is gonna feel a little more at home. But to say that that's the entirety of the driving feeling, well, that's just plain wrong because no Beetle could ever do this. Porsches used a five-speed gearbox 
that was simply a letdown to their car. I owned a 1970 911T and it had a dog leg first gear box, which is fine. Ferraris have them too. But it had a long stick and shifting gears was like trying to execute neurosurgery with a chopstick that is tied at one end with a bungee cord. The chances of going from first gear into second gear with precision was about nil. The chances of going from first gear into fourth gear with precision was about 60%. The rest of the time, you're just searching for the right gear. This G50 transmission is a dream. It just falls right to your hand. The throws are a little on the long side, but you're never going to lose a gear. And that's nice. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, handling. So many of these things got the reputation for being doctor donors with inexperienced rich guys going off the road ass backwards because, well, they didn't understand that having over 60% of your weight out back has a tendency to cause oversteer. But in the hands of somebody who understands physics, the 911s are awesome. Keep in mind, the 911 is the single most successful production-based sports racing car in the history of racing. So it can't be that bad at handling. And in fact, it isn't. It's actually really awesome. We have all-wheel independent suspension, non-power-assisted steering that's not heavy, that won't tire you out, but lets you feel everything, every little bump, every curve. You know exactly where your body is, where your corners are, where your tires are doing, and it just works so nicely. To ensure that you don't go off the road, here's a little trick. Don't lift off the throttle. Brake, put the throttle in and go. This car, if driven correctly, is simply sensational in the twisties. The 911 is like a scalpel. And, and you'll never go off the road and you'll even be able to kick out the tail a little bit and bring it right back in with some throttle inputs. Pretty awesome. And what would power and handling be without braking? And in that case, braking or braking just astonishing in this thing. Again, it doesn't feel like the mushy power assistant type. It it's the type that just stops you exactly the amount you need to stop. Unlike a lot of sports cars, especially ones from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the 911 is super comfortable. One of the things that people notice is that if you're six foot four like I am, you actually have to put the seat forward or you will not be able to to press the clutch pedal all the way. You can be seven feet tall and drive a 911 comfortably. Try that in a Lotus or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or really even a Supra for that matter. Everything is in leather and it's very high quality. There's air conditioning, stereo, uh, all the gauges you may ever need. It's a great place to be. Oh, provided you're not trying to sit behind in one of the two seats back there, but you know, I'm not aware of anybody who's actually ever sat in the rear seats of a 911. Best for luggage only. So this is not to say that the 911 is 
perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, let's face it, there's no such thing as a perfect car. Certainly a, no such thing as a sports car without some kind of compromises. So, if I were just to have my small list of niggles, my first one would be, I'm not a big fan of the very long throw clutch pedal with the catch of the clutch, that friction point being so high up. I mean, that's a German thing. But to me, it makes it a little bit harder to start on hills, and it's just very different from other cars that you drive in the sports car world. But other than that, the driving dynamics, I wouldn't change at all. That engine note. I know people love that air-cooled Porsche sound. But to most people, it's not a beautiful sound like a V12 Ferrari or Lamborghini at full song or silky smooth like an inline six from BMW. And it's not something you want to hear at the racetrack like a Shelby GT 350R right up at Redline that just makes your blood just go ah! This is more like a blender. Yes, the blender is an amazing blender and it produces the best smoothies. But it's not an oral experience unless you're one of those people who just loves the sound of the air-cooled engines. And there are a lot of you out there and that's fine. Now inside, there are a handful of things that are idiosyncratic of a 911 and, a, and other VWs and Porsches. Uh, for instance, I'm not a big fan of these heater controls, these red levers. Yes, I realize that because there's no coolant flowing around in the system, you have to have a different means of getting heat around. There's also this wonderful target top. This thing's awesome. It's actually really easy to put on and take off, but it, as the uh, Germans might say, du musst ein special tool haben. You have to have a special tool. It would have just, just been just as easy if they had simply put the cam lever actually on here and not required you to turn the little cam gears with an Allen head wrench. So aside from that, this thing is, well, it's pretty awesome. 